All right, so here we are. We're going to do a deck tech for uh, my, the current version of my deck ambush. And we're going to start with the province suite. Now, this is a, a very standard Scorpion province suite. There's two variations, usually one with public forum and one with entrenched position. Entrenched position goes on the stronghold. Honestly, most people don't get there. Um, and then, basically, cash, pilgrimage, and shameful are all there to make it very painful for my opponent to attack. Meditations is there for the early game uh, blowout, and I'm my goal here is I want Meditations to get broken as early as possible. In fact, my ideal first turn is they attack with somebody important, Meditations take a fade off of them, then they break Meditations, because then attacking is just so painful. They either have to hit C, you know, they have to give me a top five of my choice, they have to risk getting nothing uh, from their attack, or basically nothing, or they have to give me Honor Dishonor, which plays really well into the way the deck works. All right, um, <clears throat> so this is a little bit less focused than the deck originally was, and I've changed it uh, to account for an open list environment, right? So um, I used to have three ambush, three fate worse than death, and no I can swim, no Kachiko. I think that's about it, and no charge. But in an open list format, it's very useful to have one I can swim and one Kachiko. And I think charge in general is... Uh, I, got, I, I played a deck with eight cancels, and it really wrecked my plans. And the thing is, like, I'm not super scared of that deck, because as far as I'm concerned, that deck basically just falls on its face in any competitive event, because you're eventually going to... You know, you're going to play Crab, you're going to play Dragon, you're going to play these atta you know, unicorn attachment heavy factions. I think if you have eight cancels in your deck, it's just going to be really hard for you to win. Is you just there's just not enough meat but against my particular deck it's really really effective so i wanted to put in two charge because uh with the mountain does not fall it's almost as good as ambush sometimes better it's cheaper it's less punishing if it gets canceled and it gives me four call-ins uh, cards rather than three because sometimes i just don't draw an ambush and it's not like the deck is terrible when that happens but it definitely doesn't work the same I may eventually go back up to three ambush and possibly three charge. I did that before, and the problem was that I didn't have enough targets, and they were just sitting in my hand doing nothing. So, all right, over to and uh, you notice I have three adept and three cunning magistrate. Um, I have the full dishonor suite of, of three for shame, three court games, and three way of the scorpion. Um, I'm not running Cloud of the Mind because I don't like having to play it. I don't like having it let go. I don't have like I have good let go targets, but you know Pathfinder's Blade tends to like go on something and then get uh, discarded to stop province effects. So that if they don't have the let go right then, then they're not going to use the let go. And then the only other thing I have is ornate fans, which of course people do let go ornate fans, but they're not like you know number one priority target. Um, they could of course let the go of the Oni Mask, but I just find Oni Mask to be really. It's really versatile. I don't have to have a Shigunja. Um, I can play an Adapter Shadows with an extra fate, specifically to use the Oni Mask. And it's not as it's not as good as Cloud the Mind, but it is also half a katana, which is pretty sweet. Considering I have five half katanas in this deck. Um, it's pretty useful. And because I'm trying to break provinces, I do need to run a lot of pumps. I actually don't even really have enough pumps in this de deck right now. A lot of debuff. Uh, Cunning Magistrate is really interesting because I have, you know, 11 ways to dishonor people just in my conflict deck. And then there's the Ring of Fire, there's, um, Heroi, there's, I guess I don't have Miyako, but, you know, the Rumor Monger <laughs> to redirect their dishonor. And the kind of the, one of the win conditions of this deck is I just dishonor your entire board and uh, race provinces, and then by the time I'm attacking your stronghold, you have, you know, like five dishonored guys, and you literally cannot, uh, you know, or or you have like two dishonored guys and three guys, and I'm holding, you know, two way of the scorpion and two for shame and a court games in my hand. I just attack. I dishonor your entire board. I put down a cunning magistrate or ambush one in, and bam, that's that. You know, that's one win condition. This is also obviously can win by dishonor. It's very flexible because it does have. You know, like 15 cards that are, you know, 14 cards that are basically dedicated to Dishonor. Um, it's pretty good at attacking Pathfinder's Blade, Ornate Fan. Um, I'm, I actually do have a surprising amount of military power because I've got double Oni Mask, triple Pathfinder's Blade, triple, uh, triple Bonsai, 
and to double charge. Um, I also really like defending with this deck, both because my provinces benefit me a lot from defending. That's why I want meditations to die so quickly, because I want them to waste resources trying to break this stuff, and for me to defend and snowball the game. Um, I really like ambushing or charging in Shoju, and then Mountain does not follow him, and then attack with my military, and then, you know, basically, like, ask them if they want to attack again, and then attack with him in political. It doesn't always work out that way. There are ways to... I play around it, but most people are not expecting Mountain does not fall out of Scorpion, and even when they are, it's still pretty strong. It's like a pretty strong card. It's also good with Cunning Magistrate if they have a lot of dishonored people. I can make their attacking decisions very difficult. And, you know, I've done it with like a, you know, there's a lot of them. <laughs> I did it with an, a hero with two fans, a Pathfinder's Blade, a Cloud the Mind, and a an Embrace the Void. It's like, well, he's not as useful as hero is, but I mean, he's still, you know, a big freaking dude. Um, oh, I've gone. I think I'd go to three. I think I want to go back to three, not go eventually, but I put three Mia Mystic in because I had problems with Cloud the Mind, both on Hero A and on Magistrate and Shoju and Actress, actually, and Plagiarist. Yeah, there's a lot. And, you know, Fawning Diplomat. There's a lot of pretty good um, targets here. And, you know, I can use. I've got three Calling Favors because there's a lot of really strong attachment decks out there that I... So basically I tech to my bad matchups. Like, Scorpion is strong enough that I don't really feel like I need to tech to my my advantage matchups. The one exception is, again, maybe like Crane Mega Cancel is pretty bad for me. But even then, like, even then, you know, I've got so many useful events. I can power through to a certain extent. I can power through a lot of cancels as long as I don't let them get burned on my Fate Worse Than Death and Ambush. The rest of it can be cancelled, and it's fine. Maybe I can swim. But other than those five, everything else can be cancelled. It's fine. I just have to really play into it. Um, but, you know, if it's Crane like, isn't an easy matchup, but I've got all the tools I need to destroy them and make their life sad. Um, Phoenix is fine. Unicorn can be challenging, but because I'm more militarily focused and less political focused, it's not that bad. I can definitely do it. Um, crab... I worry about they they can be really really strong with all the last forever shenanigans dragon really aggressive dragon is like a big problem um other scorpion it's not as much of a problem for me i don't have any non-scorpion conflict characters so sometimes i have an advantage over them because their way of the scorpions are dead and mine are not if they're running like you know skirmishers or whatever oh is that a scorpion crab unicorn dragon oh lion lion is always a problem but I don't know, I haven't had serious issues with Lion. I think I just haven't played a lot of good Lion players recently. But I've got, you know, I've got the Oni Masks and the Fate Worse Than Deaths. So basically, with Lion, if I can deal with the Spirit Cutlers, LPBs, um, or Ujiakis, and sometimes Taturi, when they come out, I can usually win. Uh, I have more early pressure than they do. Um, Oni Mask is really, really good for Taturi, uh, LPB, and Ujiaki. And there's, I don't really have an answer to Spirit Caller, which is unfortunate, but Spirit Caller is really, really strong, but is not always strong, so that's okay. Um, Dynasty deck, so yeah, 3 of Mystic is a little strange, but I think that it's well worth it. I don't have to get it. Um, it does have some dis-synergy with Ambush, but it has synergy with Charge. Um, I have... Okay, I have really cheap things in here. So I have the Liar, the Manipulator, because they cost one. I have the Rumor Monger and the Illusionist, because they're efficient and their abilities are amazing. And then everything else has three plus cost, because I want to have good charge and ambush targets. Um, I've played around. I took out an Illustrious Plagiarist, a Defining Diplomat, and a Yunako, all for, for Mystics. Or maybe it's an Actress, I don't know. Uh, I might change that eventually, because they're all really good. Especially Yunako is really a lot of synergy with... Uh, with the way I've been playing, it's it's pretty good. Um, and then I have two back alley hideaway, mostly for the liars, but it's just generally good. And the actress, yeah. City of Lies is so good in this particular deck. And they favorable ground. All right, and then the general way that I'm playing this deck is I'm buying one guy with one or sometimes two, but you know, one, one or two cost with one fate, or one three plus cost with two fate per turn, and then passing. And sometimes I'll pass without buying anything, because my goal is to go second and then... Uh, and then pass first every single turn of the game. 
get ring fate uh, rings from fate whenever it is possible and just find a way to use those rings to my advantage and uh so i snowball the resource game so hard like if i go second and then pass first four turns in a row which definitely has happened or often enough i'll pass three of them uh, let's say i pass three of them right so that's they got one fate from that i got four fate from that but they didn't get four fate and i didn't get one fate so you know i got three fate and they got negative three fate if that makes sense there's a six fate difference between the potential of what would have happened if it had gone the other way and if i get more uh you know ring fate than they do um that's a big deal and so i can pressure a lot of different things at the same time my friend mine's desires that he thinks this deck will work much better uh, against people who don't know what it does so i'm really curious to play against some really good players and see yeah so turn one um and so i and the, the the thing that allows me generally to pass first is i have a lot of adepts of shadows so if i get even one adept of shadows that's like unlimited two cost characters you know, sometimes it gets assassinated but honestly i'm usually pretty happy about that because if somebody plays a single assassinate like they are in so much danger in terms of being dishonored like you know if i it's just so easy against most decks you know maybe not phoenix and crane and lion are a little safer from dishonor but everybody else if they play an assassinate man they're in so much trouble um it's not that the game's unwinnable but it's just a lot of honor to give up for my two cost guy that i've got three of and a lot of people will assassinate the first adept because most scorpion only run one adept so they're like okay well i just don't want to deal with this you know i'm gonna assassinate it and not have to deal with it anymore and then i'm often holding the second one and then cunning magistrate you know I, I i usually cast him with one or two fate but sometimes it's worth it just to put him to a single combat be like you know what i need to win this combat um sometimes i ambush him but sometimes i don't because you know sometimes they could potentially cancel the ambush and it's not worth it it's the same cost as just hard casting him so yeah so i'm getting one guy i'm getting i'm, I'm mulliganing for a liar i want a liar a manipulator an illusionist and city of lies those are the things that i'm looking for shoju is also a nice thing to see early if if you get ambush you know sometimes i don't get it in my original four for my original four i mulligan for ambush of hate worse than death um forged edict and pathfinder's blade and, and a conflict character specifically out of shadows is pretty nice um all those things are really really good and i'll pretty much mulligan for those sometimes if i've got the liar and i see the ornate fan sometimes i'll keep the ornate fan uh, because it is nice to be able to break first turn um, bonus points if you have a forged edict so you can protect him from the assassinate because that is worth definitely worth assassinating something with a you know one cost that's going to break a province with you know with an attachment so yeah so i'm looking for um and then i you know i do buy people i do buy hard cast but basically i'm trying not to hard cast anything anything like I'd really like to be ambushing and charging all of my four plus cost costers. Sometimes here away, I'll put, I'll take him out with two fate because he's so, so, so good. And then sometimes the niece, I'll take her out with two fate uh, or the plagiarist, I'll take out with two fate. But it, basically everybody else, um, ideally you don't hard cast them at all. And you just, and a lot of the times I really don't, I really just use adaptive, sh I just use adaptive shadows over and over. I use my cheapos, I use my, my chuds and, um, yeah, I try to surprise people with combat tricks. So that's this deck. And that's this deck tech.